Hey, hi, Janet. It's so good okay. to meet you down here at Gallery North. Thanks for coming. Hey, listen, can you tell me a little bit about what the heck is a co-op and what's different between a, that kind of a gallery and another kind of gallery? You know, a co-op gallery is a gallery where you actually have the artists invested in the gallery, totally invested, where they're working in the gallery, they do the shifts, the sittings, they take care of the business, and the reality of it is they get closer to the community and their their fans. They get to talk to the people who come in and find out what kind of artwork they're interested in. And it's, it's something that you don't get if you just drop your paintings off at a gallery that's a commercial gallery where you've got a, a an owner who does the selling. So the kind of artists that's in a co-op probably are more public orientated than wanting to hide out. Exactly. They're much more hands-on. Yeah. They want to interact with their public. So, um, what, I guess you do both of these things. You do this painting uh, and you also do glass and I'm I fascinating do. as when did you start what? Well, painting I've done all my life. Oh, okay. I think I was painting, you know, right after I came out of the womb. I was <laughs> painting anything that would make any kind of pattern or design. I know it drove my mother crazy because I would take her lipstick, of course, and use it for drawing. But it was something that I just had to do. It was a passion, and I've done it all my life. Last work didn't start for me until later, much, much later. Now well, we got an airplane going over, but... Uh... I don't, I guess we can still hear each other talk. <laughs> what happened was I was in a bookstore and I picked up a book about beads and I became fascinated with glass beads and I never thought of the ability to be able to make glass beads. Uh -huh. And here it was all laid out in this book and I thought, you know, that's something I've got to try. And um, how long... How long has that been? Because you've got quite an abundant supply I of do. work. And, you know, glass bead making it really is a mania. Any glass bead maker will tell you it's an addiction. You just have to do it. And you just have to do it in large quantities because you're always experimenting and always testing and taking things right to the edge. So I've been doing this now for more than 10 years. Wow. I, I saw some pictures of your studio and there was something in there that caught my eye that looked like, besides the way I saw beads being made, mm -hmm. there was like a little form of some kind. What, what is that? Those are bead presses, and that's, bead makers use a, a variety of tools in order to shape glass. Obviously, you can't put your hands on the glass, because the glass is at about 2,400 degrees. So, <laughs> you have to use tools that are made of brass or graphite in order to be able to shape the glass. Uh -huh. And so bead presses, bead rollers, uh, a variety of different types of metal objects, usually made out of brass, uh, tungsten, those are the types of things that bead makers use in order to shape glass. All right. You know, I got a little mm, overheard some conversation about your amazing past. You've been all over the world, haven't you? Well, actually not all over the world. I spent an awful lot of time in the U.S. Navy. I was in the Navy oh. for a number of years. Oh. And so that took me mainly to the Far East. I was in Japan for about six years oh. as a documentary filmmaker and, for the U.S. Navy and uh, the American Forces Radio and Television Service. I should have you making this interview. <laughs> <laughs> I also did the news, and I got a chance to interview some really in interesting people, such as rock groups like the Eagles and uh -huh. Vice President Mondale and Leonard Bernstein. And, wow! You know, a variety of just very, very interesting people. Oh, that's so, a, that's exciting. Yeah. So, have you got anything on the horizon as far as other? places you showcase your art? I mean, are you just in Gallery North specifically? Actually, I, my art is seen in a variety of places. Okay. Uh, a little later this year, I will be in a show with Kathleen Johnson that is dedicated to birds, and that will be at the library here in Edmonds. Oh, nice. And then I'm always, every year, at the Western and Wildlife Art Show, which is in Pew 
Blue Alec. Oh, okay. And then I do a variety of different shows with smaller venues throughout the area, just depending on, you know, what comes up. Sometimes people will call me and say, hey, do you want to be part of our show? And do you market online at all? Yes, I do. Oh. I do. I have sold paintings online. I sell a lot of jewelry online, although most of my jewelry sales now come from Gallery North. Uh -huh. This is where I put most of my energy for my art sales, for my painting, and for my jewelry. Do you also have your own website, or is it just... I do. Oh. I definitely do. What's that? It is JRH Studio. JRH Studio. Dot com. That's my website. Oh, all right. So, and my name, J.R. Hawes, J-R-H-A-W-S-E. You can put that, dot com, and you can also get to my website. Oh, great. Hey, well, listen, I really appreciate you taking a few moments to talk, and uh, I'd like to post this up on a little site where a lot of people in town can find out a little bit more about you and your work. I would love to, love to have that done, and I really appreciate you, John coming and doing this. And I would like to interview you because you too are a very fascinating person. <laughs> hey, well, turnabout's fair play. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, listen, hey, thanks so much, Janet. Thank you, John. All right. Bye-bye.